Hi everyone, today's tutorial is going to be on Socrative. And so on the screen here, you see on the left side is my desktop screen. So it's uh, my Safari browser with the Socrative website. And there you have the teacher login and the student login. On the right side, you see my iPhone that's being mirrored using Air Server. And there you can see the two different apps. There's the Socrative teacher app and then the student Socrative app. So if you don't want to be tied down to the computer or to your laptop, you can use the teacher Socrative app on your iPhone or your iPad and you are free to roam around the class and access all the features that you would on this desktop. So first thing we're going to do is log in. So I'm going to log in as a teacher on my desktop screen, on my Safari screen, and then log in as a student on my iPhone. Here it's requesting the school's, uh, the teacher's room number. And so my room number is 621. 35 CD0. Once I've joined the room, the app will say that they're waiting for the teacher to start an activity. And so you have four different options. You can either start a quiz, you can do a quick question, a space race, or an exit ticket. Let's start off with the start a quiz. So you would have had to create a set of quizzes, and I'm going to pick this quiz right here. And there are three different options. There's student paced immediate feedback, student paced student navigation, and the teacher paced. With the student paced immediate feedback, let's try this one first. So on the teacher screen, you'll see here your students' names and then the questions. Right? So there are 10 questions in total. And it kind of tells you whether your kids are right or wrong as they're progressing through the quiz. On the uh, students app there, they need to enter their name. So make sure you tell your students to write their real names because it will print out reports and so you want to associate the reports with their actual names and you need to know who they are. So once they put in their name, you'll see it shows up here. Right? And if I were to pick true, it tells me it's incorrect, right? Because if it's April 12th, it's an even day, then that means that it would be a day two. And so you'll notice here, tells you that it's incorrect. Next question, how many vice principals do we have? I'm going to choose the correct response and you'll see here that it's correct. The next question, the science department is on the third floor. False. And there it shows the correct answer. So when you're done with the quiz, you're going to click finish and you're going to have a few different options. You can view the chart, which is the chart that you're just looking at, or you can get reports. And so you can get an entire class Excel of the data. You can get individual student PDFs of the quiz and also a question specific PDF, which breaks down all of the questions and the correct responses. And you can have that either downloaded on your computer or emailed to you. So let's try the other type of quiz. Choose this time instead of the student pace immediate feedback, we're going to do the student pace student navigation, and you'll see the difference. So, once again, it's asking for the student's name. I'm going to tell them to write down their real names, and what you'll see that's different on this screen is you can actually choose which question you want to tackle first. So, this would be really good if you had a quiz, right? a nice formative quiz or even a summative quiz if you trust your students to not go on to uh, the internet to look up the correct answers and so you can kind of go through the questions at your own pace and I'm not even reading the questions and that's why I'm getting them wrong I should know <laughs> the correct answers because it is my school but say for example, you know, that was it, I'm done. I'm gonna click finish quiz, but I haven't answered all the questions. It will tell me, it'll warn me that certain questions are unanswered. So three, five, seven, eight, ten. 10, right? So you can close that box and go back to the questions that have not been answered. And say for example, you're like, you know what? I really don't care. I just wanna finish. You can ignore that prompt and just click finish. So the progress is 70%. So she's done 70% of the quiz. And there you can see that I've only got one correct. So you could hide the responses if you were putting this up on the screen and you just wanted to see, you know, 
how much of the quiz students have completed. If you had this open up for yourself and you wanted to see the results, like the live results, you can show that. Once you finish, you can view the chart, which is the chart that you saw there, or get your courses in Excel, a student PDF, or a question-specific PDF. Okay, so now let's go back to the teacher pace quiz. So for the teacher pace quiz, this is where the teacher controls the flow of the questions. So if we press start, then you'll see it's asking for my name. Down your name. And there's the first question. So if it was April 12th, then it would be a day one. False, because we know that that is a day two. And there you see on the teacher screen, one out of one students answered. Here it shows you how many students are logged into your classroom, which is one, which makes sense because I'm the only one using my phone. And you can see how your class did. So out of the you know one student that's in this class, they got it correct. Right? Now you can press next. Now the next question shows up. So how many vice principals do we have? I'm gonna pick two, even though I know that we have three. So now that I've answered incorrectly, click how did we do? There you see the entire class answered incorrectly, but the correct response was C question the science department is on the third floor that's false submit my answer and there you see 100% of your class got it correct so there are advantages and disadvantages to each of those three different quiz options once again you can get your reports so your whole class excel your student PDF and your question specific PDF and here I'll show you what that file will look like question breakdown looks like. So here it has all the questions and then your responses and then here under students if you had more students you'd have a lot more entries here and this shows you your students' individual quiz results. So you'll see here that I got 20% on that quiz. Now that I've shown you the quizzes I'm going to show you the space race. So this is a fun kind of game within Socrative, you can select a quiz that you've created. You can pick the number of teams, so you can break your class up into a certain number of teams. You can have it auto-assign the teams or students select the teams. And you can choose a fun graphic for this space race. And I'm just going to pick the unicorn because it's very majestic. And so on the student screen, it's asking for the name enter the name. Once I do that, you'll notice that I've automatically been assigned Team Blue and it becomes a race. So the key thing is here with this race, it's not necessarily speed that's the most important because you need to be accurate. So if you get a question wrong, your unicorn won't be able to make it all the way to the end. So it's kind of that delicate balance where you want to make it to the end and you want to be the fastest, but you need to have the correct answers in order to make it to the end. So if we answer these questions, if it was April 12th, then it would be a day one. That would be false because it's a day two. You'll notice that my unicorn moved one spot there. Next question, how many vice principals do we have? We have three. Once again, my unicorn has moved. The science department is on the third floor. That is false, but I'm going to pick true. That way you'll notice that my unicorn did not move forward. Our school's mascot is a bear. There, it moved again. So that is how you use a space race. And once again, you can view the chart so you can see how well those groups did. And you can also create the Excel reports or the individual student reports or the actual just quiz reports. And that's a space race. Now say for example you have no quizzes prepared and you just want to get quick formative feedback from your class. There are two options in Socrative which are amazing. That is quick question and exit ticket. So for quick question you have three options. Multiple choice, true or false, and short answer. 
Say for example, you have an upcoming test and you're asking your students which day they would like to have their test. You can choose the multiple choice option and say, would you like your test to be on A, a Monday, B, a Tuesday, C, a Wednesday, D, a Thursday, or E, a Friday? And you can get your students to give you that feedback really quickly. Uh, say there's a true or false question. Right? You have homework today, true or false? Get your students to answer really quickly. There could be a short answer response. For example, uh, do you have any questions for me? And you can have one single response per student or unlimited responses. You can make it anonymous or have them give you their names. Once they submit, it'll show up on your teacher screen. And you can show the names if you would told them to put in their names, otherwise it would show up like this if it was anonymous. And once again, you can get the reports or you can go back to the dashboard. Okay, and the last feature I'm going to show you is the exit ticket. And this is really good for the end of a lesson. Your students are going to be asked to put in their name and it has these three questions. So how well did you understand today's material? Right, I totally got it pretty well, not very well, not at all. What did you learn in today's class? And the last question, please answer the teacher's question so you can have something specific to what you were learning that day. Right? So for example, what is your favorite feature of Socrative? That's it. So once you click finish, you can get the reports, you can view the chart, you can go to the dashboard. And some notable things to mention is that when you click on manage quizzes, that's where you create the quiz or you can import a quiz. So say for example, you're team teaching and someone from your team has created a quiz and you want to use it. There's a special Socrative code that you can then use to import that quiz. And there are websites out there like Socrative Garden where there's this Google document that people are inputting their Socrative codes. That way everyone is sharing quizzes. So you can Google that Socrative Garden and there you can get a bunch of Socrative quizzes and you can access your quizzes to edit them. And when you click on reports, you can access all of your archives. So all of your archive reports are there kept for you and what's really awesome about Socrative is that it is completely free there are no fees whatsoever and it's just pretty awesome so yeah I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope it wasn't too long until next time bye